Good afternoon. This is Jeanette Smith with All Art Licensing, and I am thrilled to be here today with Deborah Valencia, who has been doing licensing for, well, I'm surprised, only about six years. I've learned many things talking with her already, and I think you're going to really enjoy uh, hearing the things that she has to share. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Jeanette. It's so uh, nice to be here. It's great to have you here. So thanks for, for joining me and being willing to share with everyone some of your experience, because I do think that as we've talked about it, it's just there's so much to learn in this industry and so many different ways to go about it that uh, learning from people who have your experience is so valuable. And I'm going to just start off the bat by asking you, you know, how long you've been in art licensing. I gave a hint there, but I think how you got started is an interesting story. Well, um, I've actually only been doing it full time for about four years, and then my first licensing deal dates back six years. And when I got my very first license for gift bags and um, and uh, some small stationery items in late 2008, and um, prior to that, I had I've been a graphic designer for many many years, and I had done um, a lot of private label product design. I'd already done ceramic programs. I'd done bedding for Esprit Bath and Body. And I'd worked on many products, toys. I could work for Hasbro Toys, Play School, and Milton Bradley. So I had a lot of product design experience. But, um, uh, you know, my name wasn't on those. I didn't get royalty or anything. I did them basically for a graphic design fee and, you know, for other clients. But I had a lot of experience printing on fabric, on ceramics, paper, and so I just craved to have a product line out there that I could call my own. And so I actually started my own greeting card line in 2006, oh, okay. and I was um, featured on the cover of Greetings, etc. magazine as one of the top 25 products of 2007. And so I did exhibit in the National Stationery Show side of the uh, you know, as a as a manufacturer for two years, and um, but that's how I discovered licensing. We met other artists who had greeting card lines, and someone suggested that I start licensing some of my art for other products, just gift wrap, and yes. I did. And you had a lot of product design experience, graphic design experience, and you understood what manufacturers wanted, and you understood substrates. In other words, here's how you print on fabric, here's how you print on, fa on ceramic, and that's very, very valuable experience. It was very valuable. I mean, I feel that everything I've ever done in my whole career has led to being a licensed artist whether it was a creative director at a pub book publishing company, uh, designing product lines, designing websites, brochures, branding. So everything uh, everything I've ever known, learned or known has, is coming into play now. Yeah. I use all of those um, skills and experiences. Yeah. Well, what, what inspires your art, though? Because you have a very distinctive look. That um, so was that something you were doing for other clients before, or just a, there was a time where you kind of melded a, some looks together to become the Deborah Valencia brand? Well, I have to say it is really my own uh, personal taste uh, that that defines my brand today. Um, as a graphic designer, I, my job was to really be a chameleon and to to emulate whatever design look the client wanted. So if it was something. Victorian, or I had to do something uh, modern, I had to do something Art Nouveau, whatever the influence was or the, the theme. I had I was doing Hard Rock Hotel merchandise, so everything was rock and roll themed. Yeah. So I could literally do any kind of style, and, I, you know, it wouldn't be one consistent style. But as I, That was one of the things that I love. That's one of the things that drew me to art licensing as well is the, the opportunity to make my own mark and do what pleases me and do what I enjoy. What I enjoy. And um, that's why um, actually one of the biggest influences, well, there's several, three different things that influence my design. I would say that first, world travel. I mean, I'm a, I'm a very seasoned traveler. I would rather travel than eat. I'd rather travel than have a housekeeper or designer clothes or any of the other luxuries. So I, 
even when I was only making, right out of design school, art college, and I was barely making any money, I could still save up several thousand dollars a year to go on a trip to Europe. And, you know, whether it was, you know, doing the whole pension and, uh, you know, um, you know, roughing it type of thing. Right. So I um, think you wanted to really dive into the different countries at a level that where you, you know, really see things too. Oh yeah, and I just like to scour the markets and the and all that and take photographs and do an art do architectural tours and go rummage through all the you know flea markets and things like that. And so I've been fortunate that I've been all over the world and I have thousands of photographs that I've taken and so all of that experience and and of course purchasing things too and um all those things have really influenced me I mean whether it's going to Morocco and bargaining for rugs in the old marketplace or things like that I just love it yeah. going to Thailand and you know so anyway I just um a lot of I do modern interpretations of a lot of those things that have influenced influence me from textiles to architectural ornaments and then the other thing is nature I love nature I'm big at hiking and things like that so I love flowers and leaves and sort of the organic patterns that you find in nature so I do a lot of interpretations of those as well and then the last thing would be fashion I love um, period fashion like mid-century modern 50s 60 the 1960s bohemian and mod and then on the 70s kind of geometric bold geometrics so all those things really influence me i can see that now in in, in many of your patterns and of course you you do a lot with fabrics and and patterns uh, in a lot of different kinds of um, materials right in terms of your yes your no, I, mean, I i do a lot of work on the computer i mean i certainly do a lot of vector art and things like that but i also do hand lettering i do drawing I paint i do i tie dye i i do batik i mean i do all kinds of techniques and in fact for one of my one of my trips this year in october i'm going to a 10-day workshop in a remote area of japan and and I'm going to be doing textiles, traditional textiles on an indigo plantation, and where we're going to weave fabric, dye it, do block. So I'm sure that next year you will see some influence of that. Uh, Absolutely. I to kind of get my hands dirty and, and really dig into some traditional techniques, but then come back and do my own spin on that. Right, right. Well, that's great. I love hearing about how, how you um, – or incorporating the travel and the nature. And, of, of course, I've always said that uh, people with graphic design backgrounds that can mirror what clients want, then having that experience, then you can then you can develop your own look. And, but you know you can always go in any direction because you've done it. And I think that's a, such a great um, background to rely on. Um, I wanted to ask you how you think the industry has changed in the last six years. You're newer to the agency than, um, say, a Mary Inglebright or somebody who's been around for a long time, but you must have seen some changes already in the industry. Oh, yes. Well, actually, um, it seemed pretty dismal when I first started. When I first started showing my portfolio in 2008 to dozens of manufacturers, I was told dozens of times, we don't license patterns. Mm -hmm. You don't have a central image. Um, we're never going to license this. You're never going to make a living. You're never going to get anywhere in this business doing patterns. If you want to sell it, I've got a flat fee and you can hand it over for exactly. me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I, but I stubbornly pushed forward anyway and just felt that if I, if I developed more, um, comprehensive, the feedback I got from that actually drove me to do more complex pattern, more layering, more unique techniques and to also make sure that my, collections were really well thought out with coordinates and multiple color schemes and showing how they would mix and match on um, on products and I I don't think that surface design or pattern repeat patterns basically were as popular then and when they became trendy in fashion and product design all of a sudden the manufacturers around 2010 it really started trending in that direction and I started my licensing deals started adding up and um, they realized that it wasn't as easy to do pattern design, good pattern.
pattern design in-house. And, and the was, ones that really coordinate, you understand what a line looks like. Exactly. And how these 10 products can't all look alike, but they need to coordinate. Exactly. Yeah, that's really important. So you, you did many deals on your own before you got an agent. Is that correct? Yes. In fact, I found that um, in order to get one of the top agents, you had to already have some deals. And so I just pushed forward with my self-marketing and um, many, many submissions and making sure that all my marketing materials looked cohesive, my branding basically. And um, I was able to get about 32 licensing deals by 2012. And some of them are small, but it was a really a you know, a building a full brand, and that would be across all, all the major categories, stationery, craft, gift, fashion, accessories, and home decor. But then that getting that solid foundation in place um, gave me the credibility to then partner with a, with a strong agent. That's great. And I know you're with a good agent now, and you I think you did Surtex for a couple of years, but as a part of, of with your agent, or did you do it on, on your own after the stationary show? I did say, I did um I did Surtex on my own three years ago, mm -hmm. and um, that was 2009 and 11. Okay. And then 2012, actually, at that point, I've been teaching licensing classes in Los Angeles. I formed a group called Art Licensing LA, which are all people that I've, I'm mentoring to become licensed artists. And we started an actual um, group and we exhibit together. So we've done that for the last two years. Although this year I will actually be in the brand liaison booth at Surtex in booth 207. But I personally will not be there. I'm doing a big thing for Expo this year. Well, tell us. Um, I was excited to hear that you're going to licensing Expo. What tr uh, transpired to make you decide to now branch out and, and go to licensing Expo? Well, I have actually been there for the last two years in the brand liaison booth with a small presence. Um, they have a huge booth, like 50 by 50, and I have maybe a little corner of that. But... I really, um, we had been discuss brainstorming about doing a Deborah Valencia concept store. And so um, I, the decision was made with my agent myself that I'm actually going to have a, my own standalone booth. It'll be uh, 10 by 15, and it's going to be designed to look like an actual boutique. And our uh, hope is to um, present this to Target and Kohl's and Macy's and uh, a lot of the big retailers discount to mid-tier as a store-in-store -store concept. So your booth is actually going to look like a retail store. Exactly. And how? And are you bringing together all of your licensed product, or are you creating some of your own uh, unique product for that? I'm creating unique product for that because the idea is that it, it is a concept store, so it's thinking about the future mm -hmm. and all the products that I would like to see brought to market. So you're going to be seeing a lot of brand new designs that have never been seen before. And of course, I'll have photographs of my um, existing products, but um, we feel that it's more important to show new future ideas than to um, display things that have already sold sold through. I understand. That sounds terrific. Well, I and what's your booth number at uh, for the licensing expo? It's H22. Okay, great. I well, I look forward to seeing you there. And how are you preparing for that show? I mean, what what else are you doing? And do you feel is important to to maybe share with people who haven't done some of the trade shows? What do you do to prepare for the shows? Well, the shows are a really big deal. They take up a very good portion of my year. I would say, um, for me, I start designing it at least six to eight months ahead of time. So I already have a perspective, a three-dimensional rendering of my booth that, that takes into account what's going to be on the walls, what furniture do we need, what signage, all the way to, you know, down to the exact detail of every product prototype that will be needed for each shelf and everything's to scale and so on. And so I'm in the process now of making and ordering all the prototypes. And then, of course, um, uh, publicity is important. I mean, there'll definitely be press releases going out about 
the booth and setting up appointments to um, with made you know licensees that we're interested in or bedding and you know ceramics and so on and um, you know so so lots of a coordinated uh, PR program is very important and then I'll also be doing updates to all my marketing materials such as my brand book my look book that gets updated every year and that's our main tool to show to um, potential licensees to show the vision and do you do collections for the shows and that's your main push or do you, a couple times a year do you do major collections that you're you're out presenting well I wouldn't say that I'm on a really regular schedule I basically um, I will send out to all my existing licensees and then other companies I'm interested in working on with updates as they as they're created so um, you know I would say it's probably about two to three times a year but it's not on any I don't keep myself on a strict schedule it really depends on how things unfold my creativity and my other deadlines yeah and your travel <laughs> I want to go travel, travel with you I'm, I'm a big travel fan myself <laughs> yes but I'm also going to uh, I just booked a trip for next September for four weeks to Paris with my son That's Great. who just graduated from college so it's his graduation gift and we we are going to stay right in the heart of Paris in a wonderful Parisian apartment and just go to all the art museums and flea markets and textile stores and that would be really inspiring and, and a special trip for both of you I'm sure yes. yeah great well last question let's talk a little bit about how you'd advise I me, mean, I know you started in the industry, you said 2008, and everybody was experiencing a slump then because of the economic crisis. So I was glad to hear that you said things really kind of picked up in 2010. And where do you think we are now? What advice would you give to somebody who's maybe just entering the market right now with their art and designs? Well, it's hard to predict the future, but I would say that um, – I would definitely advise any artist or designer to develop a unique style and 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 brand um, to pursue the your favorite themes that your heart is really into. I mean, don't try to be everything to everybody. I mean, for example, I don't do. If people ask, do you have a collection on travel or do you have a collection on, you know, some I don't know baby showers or something like that. I don't particularly chase after every theme, so I do what I really enjoy doing, and that's mostly florals, sleeves, and everyday designs. I don't have very much in the holiday area and so on. So do what you really enjoy. And then don't worry about competition. I feel that there's room for everybody out there if you're good. And even if there's another artist doing maybe something sort of similar or you're get, getting impaired, there's – even if they're licensed with one company, their com their competitor is going to want, you know, something of that kind of style or theme. And then the most important thing is to really understand the business side of things. There's nothing worse than getting into a bad contract. And so artists and designers should not be afraid of business. They should know what contracts say, understand what they're signing, you know, don't, don't be afraid to walk away from a bad deal if somebody wants an exclusive with no – guarantees or too low of a royalty rate or a flat fee for your to buy out your art. No end of the contract, I see that all the time. It just it goes on forever, you know, those kind of things. And then also it's good to, if you know, if you can to um, learn as much as you can about the production requirements by the manufacturers so that you're a good partner for the manufacturer. You know, understand printing and, you know, types of art files, you know, know your computer skills. Um, I think it's important to really understand how art's going to be reproduced on fabric, ceramics, paper, and so on. And that's where, I mean, fortunately I have my graphic design experience and that all, you know, is a great foundation for what I'm doing now. Yeah, I think so. Well, you've shared a a lot and I really appreciate it. It's been fun to talk with you. It's been a while and, and I wish you best of luck at all the shows and with what you're doing and let's uh, do it again sometime. Thank you so much, Jeanette. Yeah.